word, have a good morning. But the seriousness of the word. Father, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your love. And Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm not to try and convince people into prayer and fasting, but I ask, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you'd speak directly to men and women in this place and place on their hearts the things that you ask them to do. Lord, give us the strength and everything we need in this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I do want to talk to you about uh, fasting. I want to talk to you about prayer and fasting. There's a reason for this. And this is just a picture God gave me. And this is where it sparked from. So this picture that God gave me was uh, there was a lake. And it was like a man had a, a brick, if you like. And he threw the brick into the lake. And as the brick hit the lake, you can imagine there's a big splash and then what comes from that is these, these ripples. These ripples. And I saw and I thought, well, what's, what's this about? And I was praying. And I believe that God revealed to me that we're living in the ripples. And I said, what do you mean, church? I mean, what do you mean, God, that we're living in the ripples? There was a big splash, but now we're living in the ripples. And I've got to be honest, we were quite far over in the ripples. You know, as it starts to like go fainter and fainter and fainter and fainter. When this passage came to me from Revelation 2 verse 5, and it was to a church, the church of Ephesus, I believe. And he says, remember the things you used to do. And it was like, go back to the things you used to do. And I believe God was talking to us as a church. I believe it's a word for the church. And he was talking to us and he was saying, look, at the moment you're living in the, the ripples. But tomorrow we might be on the edge of it. We might be past it. We can't be living in those, those if you like, you know, those tremors, those earthquakes. You have a massive earthquake. It hits. It hits hard. Like, what a moment. There's an earthquake. And then you have those little tremors after. We're in the tremors, but the tremors stop. We need another earthquake. We need another brick into the lake to start us going again. And so this is where prayer and fasting has come back to us because God just showed me a very simple picture of doing the things we used to do. I, I know sometimes I revert back, but it's... Just the journey that we're on as a church. It's just where we've been. And so five and a half years ago, what we started was prayer and fasting. And as a church, what we did, there's only a few of us at the time. You know the story. This, it grows quick. How did it grow? I believe it was prayer and fasting. Because we never went onto the streets to evangelise. We never went out there. God showed us our evangelism was the engine room. That's why I always speak so much about the engine room. Because God said to us, go to your knees, you pray them in. Pray them in. That was our evangelism. That doesn't mean that all churches should never go out onto the streets. I'm not saying that. There's a place for that as well. And in 2022, I want us to start taking teams out onto the streets now. That's where I believe we're at. But... God gave us a strategy and I believe he said to me, go back to what you used to do. Don't change it. I believe when COVID hit, some things changed. And so what we used to do is we used to fast. Say, say Luke was on the fasting team. And by the way, it wasn't like for special people. It was open for the whole church because we're in it together. And so let's say Luke said, I want to fast. I want to be on the team. Luke would do Monday. Helen would do Tuesday. I'd do Wednesday. Mozan would do Thursday. Maxine wouldn't get involved. Um, Haley would do Friday. Laverne would do Saturday. Maxine realised she was wrong. She repented. She came back and said, I'll do Sunday. And so Maxine did Sunday. And then some others were doing Monday and others were doing Tuesday and others were doing Wednesday. And every single day of the year was covered... And that was your day. So every Monday, Luke would fast. And the other seven people that had chosen to choose Monday as their day to fast, they would fast. And so we covered every day in prayer and fasting. We went from midnight, midnight, just till 4 p.m. Why did we do just till 4 p.m.? 
Because so many people were getting saved and we were teaching the new believers, pray and fast, pray and fast. And so we wanted to bring everybody on. The more mature among us may go till six o'clock, may go till eight o'clock, may do the whole day fasting. That, that then goes into between you and God. But we placed a time and I'm doing a similar thing now. I'm calling the church and I'm saying midnight till 5 p.m., not 4 p.m. We've added an extra hour on just midnight till 5 p.m. We want to fast and we want to do exactly the same. Pick a day and say, I'm going to fast. Pick a day. That's your day. What was we fasting for? We were fasting for salvation. We had two things we fasted for. Salvation. Salvation and unbelief to leave our lives. Unbelief to leave the life of the church. And over 200 people gave their life to the Lord in those first few years. Baptisms every month for two and a half years. People used to say to me, how do you see what you see? And I, I can only say it's prayer and fasting. It was a church united coming together and we pray and we fast. We're going to speak about what fasting is in a moment. I'm just giving you the context. I believe, church, God's calling us as a church to go back to that. And some of you say, aren't we still doing it? I think we've slipped off it. And I think as a church, and I don't mean just Birmingham, I mean the church, LBC Church, I think we've slipped off prayer and fasting. I think some people are still doing it. Some people are still doing their day. I spoke to one guy. He gave his life to the Lord four years ago. Four years later, he's still doing the same day, every day, prayer and fasting, every day. As in one day of the week, not every day, he'd be dead. <laughs> so, church, I believe God's calling us back to that place. I believe God's calling us back to that place. Otherwise, we're going to come to the end of the ripple. We're going we're to come to the end of the tremor. Now, I know there's a group of ladies in our church, LBC Birmingham, that, that pray regularly and they fast. And so we, we've got little groups and little pockets among us that they're already doing that. But I'm saying church together, together. Remember, a, a bigger boat, bigger engine, bigger boat, bigger engine. Always think Jaws. We're going to need another boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. And so let's get ahead of ourselves. Let's get ahead of ourselves. The trellis and the vine, the vine, that's the growth of the church. But the trellis, what holds, what supports the growth? The trellis must grow as well. I always like to get an extra piece of trellis in before that growth comes. Because if we can get that support in already, then when the growth comes, nothing's falling over. So I'm always thinking a little bit ahead. But church, it is so important now as a church that we grab hold of prayer and fasting, I believe. And so whether you're listening online and you're part of the church or whether you're, you're here today, Give Helen your day. Like literally at the end, she's going to collaborate over the next couple of weeks. We want to start straight away. It's kind of like give Helen a day. This is a day I can fast. And we go midnight till five. Midnight till 5 p.m. If you want to do the whole day, do the whole day. If you can't do the whole day, it's okay. Go midnight to five. Don't be one of those people that says, you know, uh, that's it. It's 2022, I'm going to go run a marathon now, like do some stretches, then go out and try and run 26 mile. And you haven't even done half a mile in the last five years. It's not going to happen. So what you would do if you want to run a marathon, you're going to say, I'm going to try and run a mile this week. I'm going to try and run a mile. You're going to baby steps up. And so if you've never done it before and you can't get to five, I want you to set yourself a time limit. I want you to, if you're starting off, I want you to say, look, I'm going to go, I'm going to miss out breakfast this week. I'm going to miss out breakfast. And then the following week, I'm going to miss out breakfast and dinner. The next week it might be, I'm just missing out breakfast. I find it really hard breakfast and dinner. Then we're going to go back to breakfast and dinner. We're going to get you up to 5 p.m. Like, that's the target we're going for. Midnight till 5 p.m. Pick a day, that's your day. Give the day to Helen, she'll put you on the list and then stick to it. Don't give your name if you're not going to do it. I, I'm not knocking you if you're saying, look, I can't do that. I've got this condition or I just know I can't do that. That's okay. Thank you for being honest. 
Let's pray that, that God will impart something to you to want to do that. Or maybe God hasn't called you to do that, although the Bible does say when you fast. So there is an expectation for Christians that we do actually fast. But step at a time, it can't be the pastor says, you must fast. It won't work that way. It has to come from you. It has to come, I want to fast. And what are we fasting one thing in particular that God showed me is the presence of God. We want to fast for his presence. I could, I could finish the talk now. I could just say fast for the presence of God. Let's go home now, guys. Let's worship him and then go. Fast for his presence. The presence of God in his church. The presence of God in your lives and salvation. It's the two things. Of course, unbelief leave our lives. We're going to keep praying. Unbelief leave our lives. Leave our lives. Leave our lives. Because the seed, the mustard seed of faith can move a mountain. Why don't we move mountains every day? It's because of that cancer called unbelief. And so when you fast, you start to remove things that you don't need in your life. And you're more of God, more of God's presence. It will push out the things like unbelief out of your life. And faith will rise. And you would see even greater things come to pass. What are we fasting about, church? The presence of God in the church, in our lives, and for salvation. We never stop salvation. Salvation is the aim. Salvation is always the DNA of this church. The, the year somebody says, like, if I die and someone else becomes the pastor, and they say, um, we're not doing salvation this year, <laughs> just leave the church. It's salvation all the time, it's the aim. Because he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Today I'm talking about prayer and fasting, but I'll give the gospel at the end in case there's anybody here today that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Saviour. And so fasting. I read a few things down. It's denying the flesh. Fasting is denying the flesh because your flesh wants to eat. Some of us want to eat more than others, don't we? <laughs> Why has everyone looked at Steve-O? <laughs> Leave Steve-O alone. <laughs> Only I do Steve-O jokes. I love my food. I love my food. My wife is much better at fasting than I am. Like, I remember trying to do the, the Daniel fast. If anyone knows anything about a Daniel fast, and I always take the mickey out of my wife, and I always, as a joke, it's banter between me and the missus, okay? And I always say, oh, the Daniel fast. Is that when you're allowed a plate of vegetables? It's not really fasting, is it? Uh, but I couldn't do it. I tried to do it and I had... Um, you failed on the first day. I failed on the first day. I didn't realise. I didn't realise. I thought you could have nuts. I just didn't know they could be covered in honey. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what's wrong with a chocolate apple? I had an apple, didn't I? So, I'm not the greatest one because I don't know about foods. I'm kind of like, let loose. I didn't know what I was doing. And I kept having milk. And then... Sugar comes from sugar cane, so I thought sugar was all right as well. But if you go to Daniel, you'll see that it says he ate no desirable thing. And so I kind of tried to eat as many things that I thought were okay that were quite desirable. So I, I kind of failed on day one, but I didn't have it to stick out for the 21 days. So in our house, my wife's much better at fasting than I am. I love my food, but that doesn't mean that I've not got a responsibility. If I'm going to ask the church to fast, it means I'm going to fast as well. And so corporately, this is a corporate fast. There is individual things that you fast about. And we'll talk about the difference briefly because I don't want to overload you with loads of information. Because I just want God to speak to you and start to stir something in you. Because prayer and fasting, you will see results. You will see results. And this isn't about if you do this, then you'll get that. I'm just saying we're praying and we're fasting for people's souls. Like you're going to see results. On um, the engine room last Thursday, was it last Thursday? Just before Christmas, we prayed and we prayed for individual people. They were kind of like um, prodigals, people within the church. We prayed and we prayed for this one individual. I remember praying for him and I was praying, praying. God gave me this, this um, word that he'd given me before. And it was um, the Harry Kane song. If you know about football, there's Tottenham and it's uh, Harry Kane is one of our own. 
Harry Kane is one of our own. I'm not going to chant it because I might go into other football chants and forget that there's some words in I'm not allowed to say anymore. And so God gave me this picture five years ago or four years ago. He gave me this chant in my head and he gave me this young man's name. And it was, he's one of our own. He's one of our own. He's one of our own. And it was Anthony and Emma's son. And it was Joel, he's one of our own. Joel, he's one of our own. And that tune came back to me in the engine room. And I started to like do it in my head. And so I started to pray for the prodigals. We started to pray as a church out loud. Christmas Day, who turned up to church? He's one of our own. When the gospel came, his heart went straight up and he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Because he's one of our own. Prayer and fasting, it sees results. Now, fasting, hear, hear this, fasting does not move the heart of God. Okay? Fasting doesn't move the heart of God. But fasting moves your heart towards the heart of God. There's a slight difference, okay? I feel like a teacher today. <laughs> fasting doesn't move the heart of God. But it moves your heart towards the heart of God that's impressive not my statements I mean that is impressive I mean that was quite good the way I did it and no, no okay so we're not moving the heart of God but we are moving our hearts towards the heart of God Isaiah 58 verse 6 this verse was spoken out just as Joel Foster, he's one of our own. Joel Foster, he's one of our own. That came into my head. Then this verse was spoken out in the prayer evening. Is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go through and that you break every yoke? You see, the fast is going to break the yoke. And inside of me, God's already shown me this brick going into a lake and the ripples. And he's saying, go back to what you used to do. Joel Foster is one of our own. Joel Foster is one of our own. Then this verse comes out. All this happens in the same kind of five minutes in the prayer evening. And I know, OK, we got to go back. We've slipped off. Individually, some of you might not have. But individually, some of you have and you know you have. And old breed, the same would have happened there. And so also we've got new people that have joined the church that don't know anything about this, what we started those years back. And so now they can join in. But together we're going to go forward. Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. This was my confirmation. This is the way forward. Fasting is the denial of food. Fasting is the denial of food. Maxine. But it is a spiritual feast. <laughs> that was good. Fasting is the denial of food. But it is a spiritual feast. Drop the mic, walk out. <laughs> we fast because we've tasted and seen the goodness of God. We fast because we've tasted and seen the goodness of God and we are desperately hungry for more of him. See what I'm doing here? This doesn't just come overnight, guys. This comes through prayer and fasting. Pray and fast, church. I want the presence of God. God, we want your presence so much. Because where your presence is, everything's going to be all right. Everything, the situations in some of your lives at home, the situations going on, I'm saying bring your prayer and fasting into your house. Bring your fair prayer and fasting into your house. If my daughter's got a problem at school, I need to pray and fast into it. If my son's got a problem at work, I need to pray and fast into it. Make our lifestyle a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Amen. In the Bible, when they had big decisions to make, when they were going to bring leaders on, people would pray and fast. It wasn't just like we do this kind of like, this is what I believe and we come together and we pray. We seem to miss out the fasting a bit. Pray and fast. The early church, I think the early church was starving. <laughs> like, the amount of fasting that went on in the early church. But you see, when God calls you to fast, you're not starving. Actually, you're feasting. And I'm not saying be silly and, you know, try and, try and beat Jesus' fast or anything. Like, I, I promise you, 
99% of the room, let's go 99.9% .9 just in case there is a 0.01% he has called. But I guarantee 99% of you have not been called to go and do a 40 day fast. Oh, okay, so there was one guy out, um, I can't remember what part of the world it was, but he went out into the jungle and he told his village he was going to go, um, basically his words were beat um, the fast. He was going to do more than the 40 days. Af after a few weeks, they found him dead in the forest. Like, on it, there is a serious thing to fasting as well. Like you're denying yourself of food, you're denying yourself of may maybe water, maybe drink. Obviously, there's some medical things where you can only survive for so long without um, water and stuff. So. On that kind of medical stuff, just for the camera, on the medical stuff, if you see Helen Jarvis, please, <laughs> the medical side has nothing to do with me. I'm just delivering the word. Helen will deliver the medical things. But 40 days, I don't think he's calling the church to go do 40 day fast, but I think he is calling us to commit and be consistent and come together as one and be united like a corporate fast and say, we're doing this together and we're consistently going to pray presence of God we need you without you we can do nothing we're humbling ourselves that we know that we're nothing without him and then we'll go into the source when we say we need to see the lost get saved we know that we can't do it the Hebrew and the Greek words I'm not going to try and say them because I'll get tongue-tied and I don't want to give Maxine any ammunition the Hebrew and the Greek word it means to cover your mouth or to abstain from food you do not fast social media. You do not fast the television. You do not fast your time. You do not fast all these things. Those are sacrifices. If, if you want to give up social media, that's something totally different. Fasting, in the biblical sense, is to abstain from food. Is there anything wrong with you know, sacrificing social media, coming off? No, I'd probably advise us all to come off social media. But then again, you wouldn't like and share the LBC stuff, would you? Stay on social media, just don't look at anyone else's pages. But there's some right stuff on there that you, it just poisons our minds. Half of it on social media is a lie, okay? And the amount of filters, like I don't recognize some people. <laughs> like, is that, she comes to church and she sits on the second row. I don't know. I was going to go a bit too deep then, so I stopped. <laughs> the Lord stopped me. The Lord stopped me in a moment. Like, no. Prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke 4, verse 1 and 2. Luke 4, 1 and 2. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. I love the last bit. And in those days he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry. Of course he was. Of course he was hungry. We're going to get hungry. When you fast, you're denying the flesh. Your flesh says, I want food, I want food. And you say, physical, we got something bigger spiritually to deal with. And so I'm going to deny myself physically for something to happen spiritually. And so here we see... Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, now on his 40-day fast. He's doing the long fast, okay? He's doing the long fast. Verse 14, then Jesus, what? He returned. He went out full of the Holy Spirit, did a great fast, and now he returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. You, you see, there's something powerful about fasting. There's something powerful like when you spend time with God and you deny yourself the things of this world and you say, God, I want you more than anything. I want your presence. And he starts to engulf you and overflow you. You start walking around with a power. Uh, like I don't know another way to put it. And I'm talking spiritually. I don't want you walking around arrogantly, like thinking you've got like you're the chip off the old block or something but I do want you walking around in those spiritual realms with your chest out and your, your head back and your helmet on and your sword and you say come 
come demon, let's do this. <laughs> like, because I've been fasting and I've been praying and I know who I walk with. I know who I'm with. In the physical, if we let that come out of us in the physical, we start to be arrogant and we start to be like, who does he think he is? If that's what fasting does to you, I don't want to know about it. Because there were some Pharisees in the Bible and they would stand on the street corners. And when they saw a big enough crowd, they'd say, okay, the crowd's here. And then they would pray aloud. And they would pray so, so loud with their big words and everyone would look at them and think, wow, I can't attain that for starters. But they did it out of the wrong heart. They did, it, they did it from a wrong place. The Bible says, when you pray, it expects you to pray. It says, when you fast. When it speaks about prayer and fasting, when it was speaking about the praying from the Pharisees, and it says, don't do it like them. Go into your, your own room, shut the door. It wasn't saying that's the only time you can pray. It was trying to speak about the heart of the Pharisees. And it was saying, look, their heart is so wrong. Their motivation so wrong. And they did that with the fast inside. Some people fast and they fast all the time and they fast regularly and they're consistent, but they consistently tell everyone. Wrong heart. Corporately, I'm, I'm saying corporately, we're going to talk about it. Esther, the book of Esther. Esther, I've, I gave you a scripture for Esther. I know I've gone past some scriptures. Don't worry. Can you jump onto Esther. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Sushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise and I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. This is when the Jews were going to be killed. And Mordecai says, Esther, look, you, God's put you in this place for such a time as this. Understand, God's put you in places to do things. But if you're not willing to do it, he can send someone else. OK, you may have been called for something, but if you don't pick up the baton and go with it, eventually it calls someone else because the Jews would have perished otherwise. And so Esther says, eventually, fear had hit her to start with, but eventually she says, OK, let's call a corporate fast. Let's fast for three days. Tell all the Jews we're going to fast. And me and my maids, we're going to fast as well. And that's what we're doing. We're doing a corporate fast where we're saying we're going to encourage each other each week. We're going to encourage each other. Get to know who's on the same day as you and say, what day are you doing? Thursday. OK, I'm fasting Thursday as well. Let's encourage each other. Let's send scriptures to each other every Thursday and encourage one another in this. Corporate, we know that it's happening. When you're doing something individually and it's between you and God and it's just you and God and you fast, the Bible would tell you, look, don't go and tell everyone like don't like we have Bible study. And sometimes when Charlie's fasting, he, he will come in and he says, please take the cat out of the room because I'm hungry. <laughs> I've, I've been fasting. Like Charlie, stop telling us. Stop telling us that you're fasting. By the way, Charlie never does that. Just want to. Correct that because he never fasts. <laughs> but we don't want to tell everyone that you're fasting. You don't want the world to, it's between you and God. Because the moment I say, really hungry today, Luke. How come, brother? Oh, fasting, fasting for the lost, aren't I? <sighs> <laughs> oh, have I haven't eaten this week. Oh, Ellen's had quite a bit to eat, but I haven't eaten. <laughs> oh. The moment you do that, the Bible says, look, ladies, it says, put on your makeup. Don't let anyone know. Don't sit there grumpy. No, I can't come to McDonald's with you. No, no, nothing. You know, I just can't come to McDonald's. Why are you fasting? No, no, I'm not fasting. Just can't come to McDonald's. Look, sometimes you drop the hints out so people know you're fasting. Just, no, I'm not hungry, thanks. What do you mean you're not hungry? I'm not hungry, I said. That's the end of it. That's, that's game over. Some people kind of prolong it because they want you to dig a little bit more because they want you to know, I've, I've been fasting this week. We don't need to tell anyone. It's between you and God because the motivation would be wrong because the Pharisees, they would stand and tell everyone, we've been fasting. We fasted two times this week. 
We're good Christians. God's not after that. God's wanting the things done in secret. That's why he speaks about closing the door. That's why he talks about the secret place. It's the secret things that decide and show whether you truly are a follower of Jesus or you're just living up to the world. There'll be people doing things in this world secret, in this room, secretly that no one knows about, but they're going to have made such a difference in heaven. There are going to be people walking into heaven because of the things you did in secret and nobody else knows about them. Keep them that way, church. Keep them that way. They bear so much more fruit. At the same time, corporately, this is the corporate fast that we're doing. We're going to choose a day. That's your day for the year. For the year? Yeah, that's your day for the year. Trust me, it's going to get easier. But when it gets easier, we want to make it a sacrifice. So let's increase our hours. Let's go from four o'clock to five, from five to six, from six, let's do the whole day. Let's do that. Let's make it a sacrifice because I want to deny my flesh. I don't want it to become a religious thing. And I think, I think in myself, talking about myself now, because I was obviously um, involved in this corporate fast as a church. I think it became a religious thing for me. I think every day I got to that day of the week, mine was a Thursday, I got to my Thursday and I just did it easy. And it, it was no longer a sacrifice. I, I did my time and it just became religious. And I, I think that's why me, myself, I slipped off a little bit. And then when I'm slipping, I'm saying if I'm slipping, others may be slipping as well and I'm a big believer in leaders should lead. I'm a big believer if... If I'm going to, I should set a, a standard type thing, a bar, not that you see, but behind the scene that heaven sees. So if I'm calling people and saying, look, there's the offering, I should have set a standard in secret behind the scenes. I shouldn't be asking of anyone else to do anything that I myself won't do first. And so I think I slipped a bit with the fast inside when COVID hit. Whether it was because of the season and we was not all together or whether it's because it had just become a religious thing to me. I don't know, but I, I see God readdressing that within my own heart. So today I'm preaching and I'm teaching to myself as I always do when I stand up here. I don't hide things. I'm very honest with what I talk about. And so if you've got in that same place and it just became just normal to you, it did to me as well. So let's change it. Let's stop. Let's refocus. Say, God, forgive me that it became normal. Forgive me that I became religious with it. I want to go again. Hence, I'm fasting for your presence. I'm fasting for your presence. I'm fasting for your presence. I don't think that you can ever become religious with that. Because we're saying, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. Without you, God, we can do nothing. Without you, Lord, we can do nothing. Matthew 9, verse 15. Just so you know, it's for today fasting. Matthew 9, 15, it talks about when the bridegroom's with you. Here you go. And Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. This is a pure indication. If you know this context and this story right now, there was a disagreement. And some of the, the people were saying, why do your disciples not fast but ours do? And Jesus is saying, look, when I'm gone, then, then it's time to fast for them. With Jesus is at the right side of the Father now. It's time for us to fast, church. It's time for us to fast. Fasting is the opposite of the first human sin. I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's the opposite. Why? Because eating was forbidden in the garden, wasn't it? It was forbidden, like you can't eat from that tree. You can eat from anything else, but you can't eat from that tree. That's forbidden. And yet now we're refusing to eat what we're allowed to eat. So the opposite. Just thought I'd throw it in for Charlie to dissect and <laughs> do something about. I, I heard a joke and I think it's OK. I'm going to say it. If it's not OK, if it's not OK, please forgive me. But I think it's OK. Like genuinely, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But if Adam and Eve would have been Chinese... Sin wouldn't have come into the world because they would have ate the snake. <laughs> okay? No? Would that be all right, George? Not okay? Okay, not okay. Let's move on to Daniel 10. Daniel 10. 
I'm, I'm okay to say it because of my Chinese brother. That, that's why I'm okay to say it. Daniel, there's fasting in the Bible. Fasting in the Bible. I'm just trying to play like, have I said anything wrong? No, I think it's all right. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. I spoke about Daniel fast earlier. Um, this is where they get that specific fast from. And they talk about a Daniel fast. They, he ate no pleasant food. Now, 21 days he fasted. Now, there was a battle that went on in the spiritual realm. But what happened is the angel, when he comes down after 21 days, he said, God heard your prayer on day one. But on my way down... I met the Prince of Persia, basically a demon over a stronghold of an area, and we fought and we battled. And now I broke through. If he would have stopped praying, if he would have stopped fasting after day 18, would the message have ever got down to him? And so this is why when we've got some, and this is why I'm saying if you've been called to fast, fast. If you put your name down, do it. Because people are relying, the church is relying, the, the, the lost are relying. Well, we're in this together. We're standing side by side. We're relying on one another. Let's do this together, church. Let's do this together. If you put your name down, go for it. But it says here, and you'll pick it up in a moment. It said, I ate no pleasant food. I ate no pleasant food. I ate no desirable food. The same word is used in verse 11. And he said to me, this is now basically God speaking, or is an angel coming down, should I say. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. That word greatly beloved in the Hebrew is the same word as desirable. Same word. Oh, man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak to you. But it's that greatly beloved thing. It was like, go, go back to the verse I just gave you, please, Wayne. I ate no pleasant food. I ate no desirable food. Go to verse 11 again, was it? Oh, Daniel, greatly beloved, pleasant, desirable man. Like, I ate no pleasant food. And then in the next breath, God's turning around and calling him a desirable man. I ate no desirable food. And because I ate no desirable food, I became desirable to God. You understand? Like there's something about prayer and fasting, church. There's something. It's not that we're moving God's heart, but our heart is moving towards the heart of God. And when I'm praying, Lord, we want your presence in this place. Lord, we want you more than anything. We're saying, God, send your presence, send your presence. Salvation, salvation, salvation. I ate no desirable food. God calls you desirable. When we fast, I think God smiles. I think his heart smiles. I'm not saying you're twisting his arm. You know, some people, they, they want something. It was never in the will of God, but they want it. So it doesn't matter how much you pray and fast. It doesn't matter how much you fast for something that God hasn't given you. You can't like twist his arm. That's not the way fasting works. But I know in the will of God, salvation stands. Because his desire is that no one should perish. So we can all come together and fast for salvation. And I know that without the presence of God, none of this is worth it. So we can all come together and we can pray and fast for his presence. Mark chapter 9, there was a boy that was healed and his disciples couldn't drive out the demon. Let's go to verse 17 and 18, give you the context. I am shortening it. I am in a, I'm finishing up now. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out. But they could not. Verse 19. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. They bring the boy to Jesus. Jesus deals with the demon. Then he says this in verse 29. So we said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. 
if, if we'd gone back to the, in that context, there's a demon in a boy. He needs delivering. He's got a, a spirit, a mute spirit. He needs delivering. He needs setting free. The disciples couldn't set him free, and yet God's given them everything they need to do it. Jesus sent them out with authority. They, they've got everything they need, but then Jesus halfway through says, oh, you faithless generation, or you unbelieving generation. And it's that word unbelief. So when we fast, when we fast and we pray, and we put these things together, it starts to move unbelief out of our life. If I had like a jug of water and I thought this through a little bit more, I could give you a practical and we could put a lot of, say, I don't know, table tennis balls in a, ju in a jug, yeah? Imagine I've got a big jug here, load of table tennis balls in there. Each one of those table tennis balls, this is good, remind me, we'll do this next time. All these table tennis balls are in that jug. Each one has got something written on. One's got unbelief. One's got hatred. One's got anger. One's got this. Imagine it now. Table tennis. All these balls got all these different things in. And now get a jug of water. And we start to pour in the jug of water as we fast and we pray. It's going to represent fasting and praying. See what I'm doing, Maxine? It represents fasting and praying. We pour the water in. And as we pour the water in, all these table tennis balls are going to start coming out, aren't they? And that's what happens when we fast and pray. Things start coming out of our lives. It starts falling out of us. As we fill ourselves with God, the presence of God, it pushes all of the things out. And so when we have addictions and all those things in our life and you want to get rid of the addiction and you there every day saying, I don't want this anymore in my life. I don't want it. And you fight against it and you're saying, go, Lord, take it from me, take it from me. And it doesn't go. And you thought, why won't it go? Why can't I break it? My advice to you is go sit in the presence of God. The more time you spend with God, the more he fills you. The more he fills you, it starts to push things out of your life that you don't need, that you don't want. More of Jesus because God won't share his house. God won't share his house. You know, when some people say that if you're possessed, like, I've heard this before, like, possessed by the Holy Spirit, possessed by the devil. You can't be possessed by two. I don't believe that the Holy Spirit would share the temple of God with a demon. But you can be oppressed by a demon. You can be influenced. You can, as Derek Prince would say, be demonized. That was the Greek word, from the outside. But within, if you've given your life to Jesus and you, you're a follower of Jesus and the Holy Spirit lives within you, I, I don't believe that you're, you can be riddled with demons. I believe you can be oppressed by demons from without. The things that have attached strongholds in your life, spend time with God. I, I promise demons don't want to uh, spend time with Jesus. They would prefer to go into a group of pigs and run down a hill. Anyway, I'm going off. I need more time to teach on that, my belief. Fasting takes us closer to the heart of God, church. The presence pushes out things in our lives we don't need. A moment in God's presence can change a whole story. Look at Esther. When she fasted, it changed a, a whole story. Changed a whole story. The presence is key. Look what happened to Judas. Look what happened to Judas when he stepped out of the presence of Jesus that one night. And when he took the bread and the enemy entered him and he stepped out, like he handed over the body of Christ.